Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's Rita from uh, Miss Rita to the Rescue. <clears throat> and here this morning for our cricket chat, the start of a new week. And we're doing our Mystery Material Monday. And I wanted to see if I could get a few people to talk about this, this product. It's fairly new. Uh, it's been around for a little while. It's called Everyday Iron On. And I'm sorry my lighting is a little bit off today because um, it's starting to get cold and dark here uh, <laughs> in the morning. So we're going to have our <clears throat> time change tomorrow. I'm um, tomorrow. Next week, this week, this Saturday night. Good morning. So I hope that the lighting's okay. I know there's some shadows here. So, <clears throat> ooh, <coughs> that's what I get for not talking all day on Sunday. Anyway, hi, good morning. So it's Rita, and I'm happy to see some friends. Come on. Hi, Marissa. And I think I see Joe and Deborah Ann, Suzette, and... Shelly and Laurie um, and Leilani. Hello, how are you? Um, so this is Cricket Chat. It's Monday. And I'm trying to remember who requested mi um, the mystery material for today be iron-on mesh. But it's a good one. And I have to say that um, I'm a little challenged by this material because um, it I think when I think mesh, I think a lot of times like sports jerseys because those are, are very, you know, like they're the mesh material. And um, so I've been a little challenged in coming up with some ideas, but I did come up with a few ideas that I want to show you. So what is um, this stuff? Uh, everyday iron on mesh. Well, first of all, I should tell you that it comes in so many different colors and fashions or styles, I guess. This one here is heart shaped, if you can see, and it's a solid pink color, uh, but it also comes in the regular dotted mesh. It comes in glitter. It comes in, I have a lot of glitter mesh. This one is stars. And there's even a Mickey Mouse version of it. Um, so it comes in, like I said, this is a, a solid. This is what it looks like. It feels a little different. Um, and what is recommended on the Cricut website is that when you're using it, that you make... A bigger design so that's what I did this morning I chose um, a big a couple of big designs so you could see the actual mesh of the material so here's here's the heart shaped red and um, it does cut and sort of weed a little differently than what you're probably used to and I'm going to show you the weeding um, I did cut out already several things but just so you know if you are um, hi Tara happy birthday um, if you are a joy owner this is a product that can be cut on the joy and obviously can cut on the other um, materials. I don't think that there's mesh in smart vinyl, smart iron on vinyl. Um, I think that you would have to put this on your mat and run it through the machine. At least I have not seen mesh um, iron on in the smart iron on materials, but, um, this is what it looks like. So here's the shiny side. This is the side that's going to become your transfer sheet. And so when you cut it, you, it, whatever way you cut it, you're going to always put that shiny side down onto your mat and you're cutting this part because this is actually the iron on material. This is just the transfer sheet okay um and that is what you you use when you're using your iron on so what you have to do whenever you're doing iron on is you have to mirror your um image and whoop, there's my my easy press so when you mirror your image it's different than making it backwards mirroring will actually cause your letters to appear 
opposite, mirrored, <laughs> so to speak. And, um, and then once you cut it out from here, you're going to turn it over like this. And this becomes the protective sheet that you put your iron on. And then um, it will appear this way correctly. Um, a lot of people kind of forget about the mirror, even though there are many, many um, reminders on the Cricut site, just so that I can show you. So here is, um, this is the a, a design that I'm working on with my joy. And I'm at the place where I need to choose the materials. So I would go to all materials and I would look at iron on and you'll see there is glitter mesh iron on and there are there's just I don't see any smart iron on with the mesh but there's everyday mesh and there's glitter mesh so the actual cutout doesn't matter it's just the the um material that it's on okay but when you choose an iron on it will tell you right here make sure that you mirror your image now how do you mirror your image well very simply when you are looking at your um let me see if i can go back to my canvas okay so when you're looking at your mat you'll see up here it says mirror off but to change it so that the mirror is on and it won't really matter with this image but it's good to get in the habit of it so what you want to do is if you're on your ipad or even if you're on your laptop or your desktop is you want to look at this page and you want to make sure that the mirror is on and you do that by this toggle switch now you don't see a whole lot of change here, but if you had something that was letters, you would see that it reverses, it, it mirrors, and that's the way that you're going to cut it. And you're going to cut it with that shiny side down on, the shiny side goes on the mat, okay? It cuts just like any other um, cut, whoops, sorry, it cuts just like any other cut in terms of um, the iron-on. See how this is cut? And I did a Mickey Mouse in the glitter hearts. I thought that was kind of cute. And I want to show you how it weeds. So um, the great thing that I liked about this material is it's great for... Uh, it's great for layering. Layering is something we don't often do, but it, it leads to really great results. So here is a gold heart um, that I cut out, and here is a glitter red heart shape with heart glitter. Does that make sense? With heart glitter mesh. And I wanted to just show you this is if we put one on top of the other, creates a really fun effect. So this is um, the gold with the red glitter over the top. Now, one thing you want to, um, you want to be careful of is you never want to layer. I mean, you can layer this mesh so that it's on bottom if you want but it kind of doesn't make sense but what you definitely don't want to do is put the glitter on the bottom glitter on the bottom you always want to layer so that the glitter is the top layer if that makes sense okay so what I did was I cut out this this image it says I love football um and then I cut out this in the I Love Football. So I want to show you how it weeds. Let me move you down a little tiny bit. So it weeds a little bit differently because it's got all these holes in it, right? So you're just going to grab a hole right here and start to pull on your cutout. Um... It could be a little bit confusing, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, it's just a little different and might take a little bit of extra time. 
So let's go ahead and weed this one. And I'm using my hand for most of this. Then we'll come back with the weeding tool. So you see it's starting to come off and it's starting to say, I love football, but there's some weeding that we need to do here. So here we'll go in here and pull off these pieces. Um, and again, it's a little bit difficult because you find that your weeding tool sort of gets hooked in there in all of those little pieces, but that's okay. You can be um, patient with this. And it's something new and, and sort of exciting to work with. So let's go through and um, take up all those pieces. And you can flip it over to see, okay, I missed this little part here in the F. And you can kind of see with this design what they're talking about, about cutting it in a bigger format because it, it's a little bit difficult to do all the weeding correctly, but we'll get to it all. Almost done here. Okay, did I do it all? I love football. So the idea for this one was that I would put this yellow down first and then I would put this over it like this, and I think that looks really kind of cute. So there are lots of things that you can do with this, um, but it's very important that you understand your heat press, and we're gonna do the heat press. I'm gonna do a couple iron-ons. I have a shirt here, and I also have this tote bag, and I've cut out in the tote bag, I've, for the tote bag, I've cut out this, which is a double layer. It says I've got this and it's like in a bronze metallic. And then this one here in the the black uh, small circle. These are small circles. The other ones are pretty big, but these ones are pretty small too. So, um, so I've cut those out and we're gonna do that on the bag. And then we can do the I Love Football on one side and maybe the heart on the other side of this shirt. But first, before we do that, I wanted to just show you where can you find this material and how many different, um, the uh, how many of these different um, material bases or how, how many different colors are available? Let's just say that. Okay. So when I go to the Cricut website and I search mesh, you'll notice that there are a lot of returns for your search. And so it will tell you that this mesh is available in both glitter and on regular color and it also is available with things like stars um there are samplers and there are uh hearts and also mickey here's the mickey mouse one um that it comes on which would be really cute and actually did cut out a mickey mouse head as i showed you like that just so you know. Um, yeah, and so you might find these in mystery boxes. And so if you do get a, a roll of this, just, you know, be aware. Don't be afraid of it. It's just iron-on, and um, it behaves very much the same way as any of the other iron-ons that, um, that are there. Also... I wanted to point this out. I haven't done anything and I think it's something that we should do. This is called metallic iron-on mosaic. It's not the same as mesh, you see, because it's actually um, a mosaic or like a grid pattern. So this is not the same thing and it has a different heating temperature, whatever, but it's still iron-on and that is not the same as this. And if you did receive this in, or for some reason in a mystery box. I don't remember getting this in a mystery box, although maybe we did. Um, okay, so always what you wanna do is go to the heat guide. If you're not aware of the heat guide, it's a very useful, I'm gonna move this light, it's a little bit 
All right, here we go. It's a very useful um, guide that is right on the Cricut website and is kept up to date. And you can just search for it by going to your Google browser and just typing in Cricut Heat Guide, H-E-A-T, just Cricut Heat, and it will bring up this Cricut Heat Guide. It also resides on the Cricut website and, um, whoops, so here it is, Cricut Heat Guide. What I like about this is you get to choose which press you're going to use. Now, if you still use your iron, your household iron, um, you want to probably choose Easy Press, the original Easy Press. The Easy Press 2 is the most up to date and the hottest of the presses. Um, I don't know what you would choose. Perhaps you would choose Easy Press 2 if you have one of those, uh, those other name brand, but you'd choose one or the other of these. And I have an Easy Press 2 in the mini, but I'm gonna choose the Easy Press 2 for this. And then what I'm going to do is choose the material that I'm going to be using. So I use this drop down box and you see I have everyday iron on mesh and then I also have glitter mesh. There are two different kinds. So um, let's just choose glitter for this. And then we choose what the material is, what the mesh is going on. So let's choose cotton um, for this particular uh, example. And then I have a easy press mat, but if you don't have one of those, you can choose towel. And then when you hit apply, you're going to get this and it shows you the exact amount of, well, like the exact temperature and the exact amount of time that you need to um, to do iron-on. And this works with all the iron-on uh, material, including infusible ink. So um, definitely bookmark this heat guide and use it whenever you can. So, um, so here we go. It's telling me that I need to preheat my, I'm sorry, I keep getting those little notifications. So I need to preheat my, uh, item so in this case my shirt for five seconds and then I have to put my press on at 330 degrees Fahrenheit and I have to press for 30 seconds I'm going to use a light pressure and um and then I'm going to flip it and do for 15 more seconds. And then I'm going to wait till it cools down and then peel it off. Okay. And it also goes into great detail about um, your, the supplies you need, how to prepare your, um, your material and also your uh, machine, your easy press machine and how to apply it and take care of it. So, in this case, we will do um, the t-shirt. We're going to do that I love football. But in the, in the case, actually, what we'll do first is we'll do the um, Mickey Mouse on the back because that's just one layer. So we're going to do a glitter mesh on 100% cotton. So it says we need to um, heat up our press to 330 degrees. So let's move the press over so you can have a look at what it is and how it works. Now mine might be a different color than the one you have, um, only because this is just the color I have. I don't know, I think I, think I actually got this one from uh, HSN when it was first came out. But it is the Easy Press 2, and you're going to turn it off on right here. Now when you turn it on, it remembers what degrees you had it on the last time. I've already had this heated up once or twice this morning, but if you want to change the temperature, you're going to press this button here, and you'll see it's showing the temperature of 330, and it actually will, um, it will blink and when it's blinking you can change go up and down on the temperature okay and then once it stops blinking that's the temperature it's going to heat up to you can also change the time by pressing this little stopwatch and going up and down 
whatever you want to do as long as it's blinking. When it's ready, this little light will be green. Okay, and this is very, very hot, and it actually sits in its own little case or base here. So be do be careful, it will burn you. It's very, very hot. So I'm going to move my um, heat press over. I have heated it up to the 330 degrees for 30 seconds. And what did we say? We were going to do this one first and we were gonna do the Mickey Mouse. So let's do the Mickey Mouse on the back of this shirt. And this is just a, a regular old shirt that I got at Michael's. It's one of those, uh, oh, you know what? I got this one at Walmart because it's a Fruit of the Loom. It's 100% cotton. Um, and generally speaking, you want to do a cotton rich um, for regular heat um, transfer vinyl or iron on. But with infusible ink, which is a different product, but still a heat transfer, you need a, a polyester rich shirt. So there's the difference there with those two products. So here's our um, Mickey Mouse thing. So we're going to put it wherever we want to. I'm going to try to get it a little close so you can see it as best as possible. And then we're going to just sort of eyeball it. One of the things, if you're going to do the back of the shirt, you do need to be careful of like where the seams are because it can often cause problems. And I can feel the seam is right here. So I'm going to put my, um, my, design below that neck seam, the front neck seam. Now I don't need to use a Teflon sheet or anything over here because this is enough. This is, is the um, protection. Remember this is part of the material when you cut it off. So there to me seems appropriate there and to recheck my heat guide, I need to um, preheat my shirt. So I'm gonna take this off and take my easy press and just sort of give it a little bit of warmth for five seconds, doesn't have to be exact, um, and then move it over. Whoa, and look, I burned my shirt, yikes. Wonder why I did that, why that happened. But we'll just continue on as if I didn't. I think that there's dirt, yeah, there's dirt in my base. Ah. That's what I get for storing it on the ground. Okay, so here's my um, my mesh, and I am going to, I'm just gonna check the bottom. No, it looks pretty good here. Um, there's a little bit of dirt here, so okay. So then I'm going to put my Easy Press on there. I don't have to really press a lot, but I do need to do it for the 30 seconds. So I'm going to do that. Now, when you're doing infusible ink, it's best not to move your press, but when you're doing um, regular HTV or iron on, you can move it around if you'd like. Um, and also remember, there are three different sizes of the easy press. Um, if you tend to be, this is the medium, but if you tend to be someone who likes to do bigger projects like pill pillowcases and tote bags and things, you might want to consider the larger one. And then there's the mini, and which is like a little, here's my mini right here. And then there's a smaller easy press as well. Okay. So there's my 30 seconds and I have to let it cool for a few seconds um, because it's still quite hot. So, um, I don't want to start peeling it off, even though I'm going to resist that urge to peel it off, even though you really, really want to try, right? So just kind of give it a little bit of time. You could turn it over and do the front side, which, um, or you can do the inside of it if you want to sort of um, use up that time waiting. <laughs> so let's see if it's gone cool now. It's still a little hot, but I'm gonna try. Still hot, 
It's still burning my fingers. Well, it's peeling off, although I would definitely wait, try to be as patient, not like me, but try to be patient because this is still pretty hot and it, it does better when it's cooled off. But I wanna show you what it looks like. There we go. Oh, so shiny. And in our little Mickey Mouse hat, you know, yes, you absolutely could use your mini with this. So you could use your um, mini iron. I just didn't have mine on, but here it is. And I could definitely use it. But with the mini, you have to move it around like this when you're putting it on versus this, which is, you know, with the regular easy press, it's just mostly you just press it and you can move it around a little bit, but not as much as with the mini. All right, so this is what that mesh looks like. This is in the glitter and hearts, which I think is really adorable. So what about if we do um, layered? Well, um, if we do layers, remember we're going to do a either solid or or something that is not glitter. So this is not glitter that I cut out. Um, yeah, that's true, Diana. If you take it off of the mat, it will cool faster. Um, but I never think of that when I'm doing a live video and I get a little impatient. Um, so... Those are all best practices. So here we've got, this is the base of our two layer pattern. And this, the top part is the glitter. No, not the glitter, the mesh in red. And then this is yellow, regular, everyday iron on. So I'm gonna put this on first. Now, one of the things I wanna check on that is I want to check in my, in my heat heat guide where I'm going to, to check regular everyday iron-on. So here's everyday iron-on, and I'm choosing the same base material, which is a cotton, and apply. And it says now I should do this for um, 315 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going over here, and I'm going to change my temperature to 315 and now I have to allow my press to cool um, a little tiny bit before I can go ahead and put this on so I can just sort of play around with how this is going to go and I think this is going to look really cool. So what we're going to do instead of just doing it like this that won't work because we have this plastic sheet in the middle first we have to do this one the um, color, the base of the two layer system, right? Like this. And then we can come back and put on this one here. See that? So we're just waiting for the um, press to reduce to 315 degrees. Now, if you have questions, there is a wonderful guide in on Cricut. And I want to just point you to this because a lot of times you get little questions and you don't know the answer to it. And I think that Cricut has worked really, really hard in developing this. They call it help.cricut.com. And there's all kinds um, of questions, um, answers to questions you might have. So here it is, help.cricut.com. And you can either search, for instance, I could search for mesh and I get all of these answers um, iron-on mesh instructions or what materials can I cut with the Cricut Joy and how to work glitter iron-on in general. So there are all kinds of wonderful instructions here for you on help.cricut.com. So if you ever get stuck and you look for, looking for a quick answer, definitely check that out. Now I just heard my machine beep, which means it's now cooled to 315 degrees. I am going to heat it up, heat up the front of my shirt for a few seconds. 
and then I'm going to lay down this. I don't have to worry about a seam here because um, I'm doing the front. So here is this and I'm going to take my machine and hit the button so it will do the countdown. Um, and actually I think, I'm gonna just double check. Yep, 30 seconds, 315 degrees. Um, at 30 seconds so we're going to do that and we're almost done with that so let's just give it a few more seconds I'm not moving it around I'm not pressing down on it it's pretty weighty if you've not had one of these it's pretty hefty so you don't have to um, do the press press like you might um, be tempted to do with the with the um, regular iron and I'm using whoever it was that told me that it this heat it does hold the heat there so kind of giving it a little bit of uh, air underneath there to kind of get it cooler but I can move it from here it's a little hard I have a kind of a small area in which to show you this so pretend like I let it cool all the way and it's not cool and I can tell because it's not peeling off um, all the way. I'm just going to give it a few more seconds around. Here we go. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um... Let's cool off. All right. Thank you for being patient with me and with my machine. I want to show you the right way to do it, um, but often I, I feel like a little pressed for time. And I'm actually going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and do this one first simply because I want it to cool correctly. So let's heat up this. This is a tote bag. I got this tote bag from Amazon. I think I bought a dozen of them back in the summer and I had one left over. And I'm going to do this, which is that bronze metallic Let's see if it's straight, it looks straight to me. So let's go ahead and press this one while I let the other one cool. And yes, even on a big design like this, you could, well, pretend it's cool. <laughs> Um, you guys are the best. So even though um, it's bigger, I can still move it around, you see, and it can still do an entire larger piece. And then also remember, um, I could use the mini, of course, but I just need to make sure I move it all around so that all of the parts of that iron-on is making contact with the machine and oftentimes you got to really be careful of the edges there so we'll let that um that sounds like it's done we'll let that cool yep let it let it cool put that aside and here's our now it's definitely cool getting into a little mess over here okay so let's see how we take this off. There we go. Am I still in camera? Good. Okay. So I peel at an angle like this. I don't know. It's just how I, it makes me feel like <laughs> I'm not lifting it off when it's still a little bit warm. And it is a little bit warm still. Um, and here we go. Okay. So there is our first layer. Where's our second layer? Here we go. So I'm just going to sort of line it up 
on the first layer, make sure that I have got it all lined up correctly. Here we go. That looks good. And what's kind of nice is that this has a little bit of adhesive there, so it holds it in place, so you don't have to worry about it shifting. Um, okay, so, oh, you know what? Oh, I almost messed up. I'm supposed to turn this to 330, and it's going to take a few seconds. I'm sorry I didn't think of that ahead of time, but we'll, meanwhile, we'll just admire how cute this is until it hits the 330. Um, and it is cute. It sort of reminds me of ketchup and mustard, though. <laughs> um, I'm having connection problems this morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hope you all are doing well otherwise. Okay, it's at 3.30. And now I am going to press on here. Press my little button for 30 seconds. And I'm gonna make sure I get it all over there. Not super pressing hard, but just making sure it's hitting all, it's making contact with all of the design for the 30 seconds. And again, you can move it if you want. And three, two, one, okay. And we've got to let it cool because I'm so tempted. But let's go back to our tote bag and see how that one's doing. This is now cool. And, oh. Yep, it's coming off. And I'm in. Thanks, Babs. I'm cool. I don't know about being cool. <laughs> All right. So this is coming off. So we can now put the mesh layer over that. And there is that black mesh. And this is an exact right on top of the other. What's up, Benji? What are you doing? Why are you crying? Benji's crying. So that looks, and I think that's gonna look really cool because it's got the gold or the bronze color. So let's go ahead and do the 30 seconds for that. We're gonna give it a few more seconds just simply because um, it's a larger piece and I want to get all four sides of that. All right. Yeah, I want to make sure I get all four sides. And I've tried to line it up as best as I can. It's slightly off on, on this end over here. I like to be standing over it. And right here I have to do it at an angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So not that that's an excuse or anything. But um, just so you know. Okay, so we have to let that cool. We're done with that. Let's go back to our shirt, which is now cool. Oh, I kind of bent it there, so I'm going to start here at the top. Yep, here it comes. Ooh, I'm scared. Ah, I'm a little scared. I don't often do layers. And look, it's kind of, ooh, that's interesting. Ah, okay. So the little holes where the mesh are, are catching a little bit on my base material, which is kind of interesting. But maybe I need to be a little more like up and down. Do you see this here? So it's kind of leaving a little mark there, which I think will will um, lay flat eventually, but that does leave an interesting um, dilemma, doesn't it? So I see that, do you see that? Yeah, <laughs> so, but 
hey, you know what? That's why we try these things on Cricut Chat so that we can understand what we're faced with. And it's not a question of it's hot because it's very cool to the touch. So, mm, interesting. Well, I don't know. It looks kind of interesting though, but I think what I will try to do, let me show you what it came up as. So you see these little dots, which does look kind of interesting, but I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to turn this inside out and press on the inside of the shirt to see if that actually lays it down a little bit, just for a few seconds. Okay, so there we go. Just turn it and see. Yeah, it did, it did make it a little bit better. I think part of that has to do with the actual shirt, but I might be mistaken. But it doesn't look terrible, but you can see where those little hearts were. And, it, and we are looking up really, really close. So it's still a cute design. Um, and I suppose as it... Um, as it sort of lays there, it might pull up on that too. So there is our layered effect, and this is our single effect. So let's do the tote bag, which is not going to cause that problem because this is an exact cutout of one to the other, right? So um, let's see how this one goes. No, oh, very interesting. Oh, I really like this. So I guess we learned that if by you doing a layered, maybe we don't have too much of that other part be exposed because this one came out really beautiful. I really like this. And I love the dots because I love polka dots anyway. So let's look at both of them so you'll know. So this is the canvas tote. And I did this at 3.15 for the bronze. And then I came back and put the, the um, polka dots on there for another 30 seconds. I call it polka dots, it's mesh, okay? So that's what it looks like, like that. Um, and then here is the just the mesh in a glitter, in a Mickey Mouse, right? And it looks really good. And then this was mm, meh, you know, kind of thing um, where it's, a solid color, but there's a lot of space. And what's happened here is that you see a little bit of, let me get real close so you can see those dots. So I think it takes away a little bit. And I think maybe it's just a matter of picking a different design that I wanna do there. But um, So there you have it. This is our mystery material for today. It's mesh iron on comes in glitter, comes in star shapes, comes in heart shapes and uh, metallics and solid colors, as well as glitter, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so there's a lot to do. And I bet you guys, because you're so clever, that you'll find different ways to work with this material if you happen to get, um, if you happen to get a roll of this or you happen to buy a roll and you didn't know what to do with it. So now hopefully that mystery is solved from today's 
Mystery Material Monday. Um, let's see. That's it for today. Uh, let's see. Just to kind of recap today's Mystery Material Monday. And for the rest of the week, which happens to be going into Halloween, we're going to be doing uh, one or two other Halloween, like, last-minute projects, including a, a luminaria for your doors if the kids are coming. Um, and I'm going to do a, a sign that says trick or treat yourself <laughs> so that the kids can take the candy that I made for them. Um, then I also have um, a harvest or Thanksgiving project that I want to show you and I'm going to be looking for another Dollar Tree project to show you for the rest of the week. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I hope that you'll come again tomorrow and so happy to have you here. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.